Hey there, welcome to our channel. Let's move on with our episode. So in the previous episode, we have covered the use case of the card and the order process in a various way. We took a look at the microservice architecture, how we can implement the card and the order process. As you can see in this diagram, so we have a plenty of microservices, right? So to, to build one e-commerce application as an example, right? So we have our card service, we have our catalog, inventory, seller, right? order, shipping, pay, payment service. So a lot of microservices, they're just like working together to uh, to build the whole application logic, right? So uh, feel free to build all the services if you like, and then, then definitely it's going to be a good experience for you. All right, so in this episode, we're going to put our hands on the real business where we will write a lot of codes uh, in order to completion of the whole, uh, whole series, right? And you can see, um, there are there are a few microservices we have in this diagram. So uh, we're not going to cover this grayed out the microservices in terms of like inventory and the seller, right? This is not a part of this whole series. You can maybe get this this stuff in later stages in a different series. But uh, in in this case, we have our order service as of now, right? So if you go to the source code, then if you go to source code here, then you can see we have our order service and we have our catalog service, right? So these, these are the two services we have right now. So two more services we need to introduce. One is the auth service and another one is the payment service. So payment service also we are going to cover in later stages in terms of not in this episode, maybe maybe uh, an upcoming episode. So in this episode, we're going to build a very teeny tiny uh, microservice that is called the auth service, right? So why auth service is going to be needed? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer it in a second, right? So uh, bear with me. All right, so let's understand the user flow of this diagram. So you can see the our user can be from anywhere. It can be from our maybe website or maybe from mobile app or maybe from Postman, right? And while our user try to reach to our application, then it has to all the calls, all the requests has to go through our API gateway. Our API gateway is playing a vital role right here. As an example, while user try to browse some products, then it, if that the request has a prefix that as an example the catalog then api gateway is providing that request to our catalog microservice and similar applies for our order payment and auth as well as right so now you can see some of the microservice that has the public endpoints as an example the catalog service can have a public endpoints uh, for uh, browsing the products or maybe product product by id or maybe uh, listing the category etc but some of the endpoints are not 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 public as an example the editing the product details, right? Deleting a product, right? Or similar applies for placing an order or creating a card or making a payment, right? And all those endpoints are that, that those endpoints are those public endpoints are not required any kind of authentication or authorization, but the private endpoints are really needed uh, the authorization to perform that particular operation. So uh, if you see an example, while we are making the payment, if we, if we are not aware about which user is going to make the payment and that, that request is not authorized to make the payment, then definitely you cannot, cannot perform that particular uh, operation in the payment microservice, right? So let's try to understand what is authorization and authentication. So authentication is a process of verifying our user. That is, that is just to try to verify while uh, our user is uh, a valid user, all right, in our platform or is it a returning user of our platform or not by, by looking at the credential as an example, our user ID password, et cetera. And if we, if we found that user is a valid user, right, then we are going to assign some kind of capability in terms of rules, right? As an example, in the catalog microservice, we have two rules. One is uh, buyer and seller, right? If, if the rule is the buyer, then definitely you cannot edit the product. If you cannot delete the product, right? If it is seller, then definitely you can, you can edit and delete the products. Right, and similar applies for the order and the payment microservice as well as right. If you have the the uh, make payment capability, then you can make the payment. So all of the capabilities, all of the rules are it's uh, the the process of process of assigning all these rules are called authorization. So that means you are authorized to perform certain operation. Right, then you can see like our auth service is tackling all of this stuff in terms of. Uh, authentication of the user or maybe creating the user, right? And uh, maybe maybe logging it to the user and verifying the user and assigning certain token and, and it is giving back to, to the other service. 
So other service directly they can communicate with the authorization service as well as or maybe what 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 we can do if we are going to apply to the API gateway then API gateway is going to play that role to authorize that user as an example while the request is going to come from our uh, come to our API gateway then API gateway is going to call one request to, to the auth service and validate that user and uh, it will going to check like whether if we have a proper valid token and authorization header in the request then it is going to uh, assign the user data as an example the user id email to to the request that is going to forward to our microservices then these microservices are not required to have any kind of authorization uh, right there because api gateway is already validated that request right then these microservices can perform their operations smoothly without any any hurdle without any any kind of uh, a gatekeeper call right and if we don't have the uh, API gateway in place, then what we need to do? We need to call from our order service each and every request that is reaching out to the order service, payment, or catalog service. Those are needed any kind of, let's say, th those are private uh, endpoints. Then they have to call to our auth service to verify the user, whether our user is the call that is made by the user is valid call or not. Right. So this is the way we are uh, all the microservices are communicating each other. Right. Uh, definitely, we are going to focus on the API gateway also right before deploying our application. So far, what we are going to do, we are going to um, build our auth service and we are going to communicate with our uh, order and the catalog service to our auth service to make sure like all the calls that is come to our catalog and the order service that's needed some authorization. That is, we are going to validate from auth service. Right. So let's jump into the source code and we're going to do all the stuff together, right? All right, so let's jump into the source code. You can see I have opened my workspace where we have two microservices. One is the catalog and order. So let's try to add one more. So I'm gonna uh, add the one more directory to this workspace. That is going to be like, not here, maybe maybe a file, add, uh, add um, yeah, add folder to the workspace. So here uh, we need to create one more. This is going to be user, user service. Right, so create and add. So now you can see we have one more service added, right? So let's jump into the uh, this directory. So this is very tiny microservice. We're not going to focus on writing a lot of codes. I will be creating this microservice uh, very quickly and I'm gonna explain all of the codes. Um, so what we can do, we are only going to write the microservice using JavaScript. Feel free to use TypeScript or make it fancy, it's up to you because this is temporary service. Later states, maybe we can transform this microservice to uh, some other provider. As an example, we're gonna use the, the Okta or maybe uh, some the other other type of services that to, in order to uh, take the advantages of the, the social login, Google, Facebook, or, or GitHub, LinkedIn, etc. So, all right, so without spending time, uh, let's try to add some code quickly, all right?
Perfect. So now we have added the user microservice. So before spin the user microservice, let's try to go through all the files. So here you can see in the package.json file, we have we have our, our dependencies, the node mount we are using as a kind of um, uh, dev dependency, right? So let's try to use the pin version. So this cred symbol we're going to remove. So if you're going to keep this cred symbol, that means like while you are going to install this package, it is always going to uh, look for the updated version of the that, that library, right? So if you're going to remove this cred symbol, that means it's called pin version. So that means your application is only interested to install this this precise version only 2.4.3 as an example, right? The similar way we are going to do like this for for this. Uh, the the current symbol I'm gonna remove from here. So that means we're gonna use the dpin version of the, this library. So at any point of time while you are uh, you are running your application in different platform, it's not going to break, right? And we can start our application by simply running dev uh, uh, eon dev or npm dev, all right? So this is the, the command we're going to use for spin our application. And let's close this package.json file. And next one is our .env file. So this is our .env file. You can see we have our database URL, we have our secret, we have our express in, JWT express in, and the port number 9000. So already we have been used the port number 9001 and 2. So let's close this out, right? So we're gonna revisit for this database URL shortly. Then we have our dbsql, because here in this application where we're gonna use the deep PostgreSQL, and um, this is temporary service. That's why we're not focusing a lot of stuff in in here. As an example, writing the code using uh, maybe ES6 or something. We're just simply using the common JS. Feel free to uh, write the ES6 or maybe TypeScript syntax also you can use, right? So our main goal is to uh, spin the user service, and let's try to accommodate uh, user sign up, sign in, and the validate the user. So th and those are the things. That's why I'm just writing uh, simple uh, common JS source code, right? And here in the app JS, you can see we are simply spinning the Express server, right? And this is our routes, right? And we are we are using that routes uh, by using slash auth. If you, if you see this diagram here, you can see this auth is going to reach out to our authentication auth microservice. That is what we are going to use. Now. If you go to our routes, if you see in the auth route, so um, there, there are a few, few lines of code I have added, right? We will be going to walk it through all the lines. And you can see we have imported all the libraries, right? This is called ExpressJS and Bcrypt and JWT. We, are, we have not split it out all the code into the controller or services, right? So as I said, let's not to focus much more in the user service for a while, right? And uh, here, this function is going to take care of generating the token, right? By accessing our access token secret from our environment variable. This similar way, maybe express in, we can assign it from our process.env token expiration, right? And register is simply where we are taking some parameter as an example, the user name and email and password, and we are checking it out whether if we have an existing user. If we have existing user, we are returning with uh, with 400 errors, and if it doesn't have the existing user, then we are simply creating a new user uh, with the provided uh, the credential in terms of username, email, and password. Right? This password we have has to write here. Right? And finally, we are returning this user with 201. Right? And login is doing the similar way. We are we are capturing the e e email and password, and we are verifying the user if it is exist. Right? If it is doesn't exist, we are returning 404. And if it is exist, then we're validating the password, right? If the password is valid, then we're generating the token from here. And we're returning it the, the token data as well as right here. And this valid, uh, the route, this is going to help us to, to authenticate and authorize the, to, uh, authorize the calls from other microservices. If you see in this diagram you are here, the right now we don't have API gateway, so that means all the logic API gateway we are that has to take in place, but uh, as of now we need to find out the possibility to authorize our calls. So that's why while our order service is going to communicate, right, or it's going to, or maybe card service, uh, it's need to create the card, then our order service is going to call our auth service, right? So yeah, so this one, and this service will going to call us, right? So let's try to make it solid, and. It is going to call us to authorize that the request user request header 
the auth service is going to take care of everything in terms of uh, validating and authorizing and after that it is going to give it back to the uh, valid user data to order service so order service can create the order and or maybe card and similar applies for the catalog service as well as but let's try to stick with the order service first to uh, resolve this this issue now here this validate is going to take care of the authorization so while it's a kind of simply get request can you see it's a get request right so while we're going to call this get request then we're we're simply assigning the request header in the request right and uh, we are we are we will try to verify the uh, the session web token from there right and if it is there then we are simply uh, simply deconstructing the all the user data as an example it can have the email so here we can see while we're generating the token we're using the user and while we're encrypting this user in the login you can see we are assigning the ID and the email so these are the two data are needed as of now then I think this is all for for auth route and let's go to the config and if you see in the config inside the config we have one file that is called db.js and it has our postgresql where we are we're importing our pool right and we are creating a new pool by using the connection request that is the database url we have added in .env file here right and here we are we are connecting our our pool then finally we are exporting our query so where we need to uh, we need to uh, execute our query right so we are not doing a lot of fancy stuff here that's a very simple thing as uh, we, are, we are executing the query just to try to get it maybe insert update delete whatever right so this is the the simple thing we're doing right here in the user service right so now one thing we need to take care of because as you can see we have our table but we don't have any database so, so far so let's go to the docker compose.eml file so here uh, I think this is only uh, used for our uh, our Kafka. Let's go inside the DB, and here another Docker Compose file we have. So we have our order DB order DB server. Let's try to copy all these things from here. Let's spin another uh, another server for our user microservice because, as I explained, like each microservice has to has to be their uh, own isolated database, right? So it should not supposed to be one database should not supposed to be shared with between microservice then it's going to be distributed monolithic so let's try to keep it mine uh, that way and uh, we are going to create the another database that is called let's gonna select this order stuff from here it's gonna say user right so all all the all the credentials are renamed as user so this this port uh, pi for three uh, pi for three two is going to be our our uh our the container port but we're going to use the exposed to outside this is going to be pipe for port two right because uh, uh, all the ports are occupied in my machine so maybe in your machine uh, those ports are not going to be occupied so you can feel free to change your port accordingly so and right now this is our user db server and this is our these are the credentials so let's try to use these credentials in our our dot env file let's try to save this file and here dot env file we can see let's close this out and here we need to use the this pipe for 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 two for two and the user will be our db user user db this is going to be user db user db password password and this is going to be user user service i think the service all will verify this one right so this is going to be our user service perfect so now let's try to uh, run this docker compose file right so what i'm going to do i'll be getting inside this uh, db directory and here and i'm going to run the docker compose app dsd so now you can see all the containers are created right so our user db server is also up right now so let's go to our uh, database client right so in this case, as I said, I have not added any more uh, additional code to run the migration. So only one table we have. Let's try to execute it manually. All right. So now let's go to our database client. So in our database client, we're going to execute this table. All right. So you can use any kind of uh, the database client. So in our case, let's use table plus. Right. So here I'm going to add one more connection and PostgreSQL. And here we will say uh, user user service right the socket will be the same 127.0.0.1 and the port number will be 
5442 fine and user username will be we have the username here connection is successful now save it right then you can see this listed right here right so i'm gonna open this database uh, right now we don't have any table let's go to query and what we are gonna do like we're gonna copy this uh, sql from here copy this one and let's go to our table plus once again and this is let's try to delete this one maybe we're gonna create on one new uh, query file here new let's say a migration right here inside this migration i have just added this line of code create table users id will be real primary key user is this one email is this one right and let's try to run the run current right so okay so, so it's it's created table is created right now if you go to the item if you refresh this whole connection maybe what you can do refresh then you can see we have our user table this is very simple one table so now our our migration our database is ready so that means we can spin our application let's go back to our microservice again inside this one we can say user service user service let's try to install all the dependencies yeah everything is resolved now we can spin our our application just like yarn dave right it says like it cannot be find a decrypt maybe we have we have uh, maybe we have added something else this is not decrypt this is because s Right, because we have installed bcrypt.js maybe yes bcrypt.js so bcrypt.js this is fine let's try to uh, respin the application once again you can see the application is running on the port 9000 let's go to our our postman let's try to create a couple of users right there so here in the postman um inside the user service right so auth service so we have one one sign up this is going to be like a test uh, at test.com test uh, username and email we are just keeping it same maybe we can keep like you know only user let's say user one so for register this username is just like any username you can keep uh, all right so maybe we can keep it unique as well as but th let's not to discuss about uh, all the stuff uh, let's stick with the uh, the main logic so email we are just creating uh, one simple email and password let's try to send it send a request so this user is you can see we have our uh, our base URL is localhost 9000 and auth register send. You can see it says like a user is created and these are the data it's returning, right? It, it, it's not supposed to return this uh, data. It's just supposed to return 201. So now we have our sign up, all right? So let's try to save all the, all the requests, all right? I'm gonna close all the tabs. And now let's go to our login, right? So let's try to do login. So we are, we are gonna use the same credential. So let's try to send a login request uh seems like socket hung up so that means it, it has some issues right so if you can see the the console it says uh some error are there right so all right so let's go to our our search code so here inside the search code you can see like uh we have uh the error with the sign right zwt sign token so let's go to that the, that the particular request um here is another token we are we are using we are accepting the user while we are logging in here generate token we are sending the correct user but um while uh well while, while we are accessing the request right see see can you see the e environment process.env access token secret is not uh, not that particular environment variable it's undefined so that's why it is giving error so let's go ahead here this zwt the secret you can maybe use some different type of secret uh the the value so in our case let's zwt secret uh, maybe we can use ZWT secret and ZWT, ZWT expir, ZWT expires in. Right, perfect. So now it's gonna work. Right. Now, uh, now let's try to clean all the console log and go to our Postman and try to log in. Now, can you see we have our 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 token? Right. As soon as we are receiving the token, then I have added one one script. This is called like we're receiving a response from our our postman postman response dot json then we're setting a one environment variable that is called access token response dot token right so as soon as we are logging in right so while we are we will receive this token data right then what it's gonna gonna happen it is going to assign that 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 access token to to our, our root all right so here in in terms of in our microservice let's say ms right so here in our tradition 
uh, section, right? We are we are adding this bear token and we have added this token, uh, the environment variable here. So that means while we're gonna make the request from the catalog and order and any service, that that we no need to explicitly add this bear token to our authorization. It's our postman is gonna do for us automatically, right? So that's perfectly fine. So right now we have our our auth login is working. We are our, our sign up is working. If you're gonna try to sign in again, then it's gonna say like a hey, user already exists. Then last the uh, the request we need to call that is called validate. So validate we we no need to send any data because it's you can see it's a kind of get request, right? Only thing we need to provide the authorization. So if we have a proper authorization, that is we have received right here, then the validate will return us the exact user data. So let's try to validate this one as well. So now you can see it says invalid token. So why so? Let's try to uh, try to figure it out. And why it is saying invalid token? Let's try to dig deeper. So in a similar way, while we have just like uh, used the ZWD design, then this environment variable, it has to match with your environment variable here as well. So let's try to use the same environment variable here also, as well as in the validate. You can see this is also uh, the another one. So let's try to use the ZWT secret here. So now it should have to work. Let's go here and try to call one once again. So now right now you can see it is giving the proper data. So it is giving the user information. That is going to be needed for our our uh, our microservices if you see in this diagram. If you see here in this order service, it's going to be needed our user data. As an example, the user ID, right? And the same applies for our catalog and payment as well. Perfect, so now our user service is ready. In the next episode, we're going to apply this validate call from our order and the catalog service. All right, then that's all for today. I'll see you in another episode. Bye-bye.